Hello again. I'm back with another clock to repair. And this is one that I have not seen before. It's a Continental. On the dial it says Continental Electric. And on the bottom of the dial it reads Continental Manufacturing Company, New York, New York. I tried looking up the company but was unable to find any information about it at all. I don't know yet what year it was made. I received it in a non-working condition. I've tried plugging it in. It doesn't run. The wire is in good enough condition to let me do that. When I turn it around to the back, what I do see is pretty much very plain. There's no markings, there's no information plate, no patent numbers. There's just two knobs here. The uh, larger one is what sets the hands, and the smaller one, I believe, just works the second hand, and I'll try to show that to you. Again, the small one sets, uh, rather the central larger one, and the small one, when I turn it, or try to turn it, it just moves the second hand a little bit. And because I can spin it, I'm suspecting that this is a non-self-starting clock. There's also no date codes or anything written on the bottom of the case. Uh, but the fact that I think it's not a self-starting clock, most of the ones that I've seen in the past, they were pretty much manufactured in the 1930s, maybe early 40s. So it's possible that that's how old this clock is. I'm going to look to open it up and try to figure out why it's not running. I'm seeing just two screws in the back here. I imagine once I remove those, the whole clock will come out from the front. So let me get set up and start taking this one apart. One other thing I've noticed in here, and I'll try to show it. Don't know how they got in here, but I got one spider over here. And another one, where is he? There he is. Most unusual. But for now, I'm gonna get those two screws out. Okay. That came out pretty easy. Let's just pass the wire through here a little bit. Now the first thing I'm seeing is that here we have some original cloth covered wire. So this has been repaired in the past. This is a replacement power cord that's been attached here. So the cloth covered cord, the cloth covered power cord tells me this is a pretty old clock. A very small coil. Definitely some unusual gear setup here. But what I'm going to look to do first is remove the dial, the rim, the hands. Then we'll see what's going on in here. What it looks like here, and a lot of other clocks, you'll see little metal cutouts in the rim and it's bent in to secure it to the plate. This seems to have just little, small little indentations along the uh, edge of the rim here. So I'm just gonna try to bend all of these out and we'll see if that gets the whole thing out of the uh, from the front. Okay, let's see how easy this comes out. If at all. Hmm, interesting, not budging.
Okay, I'm gonna spend uh, some time getting this out, so let me work on it, and then I'll continue. It feels like I may have gotten it loose. glass. We'll get rid of these spiders here. <laughs> They're in. And before trying to take off the hands, I'm just going to take off the cord here. It'll free up handling everything. I'm just going to cut it off. And what I'll end up doing is removing these little sleeves here. This is pretty solid wire. I'll be able to strip the insulation and just connect a new power cord to this. But for now, we'll work on the hands. And it appears as if the second hand is going to be a friction grip. But I see a nut holding the hour and the minute hand which I'll have to loosen off, but let's see how easy this one comes off. And that's pretty tight right off the bat, so let me work on it a little bit, and then I'll continue. I don't want to rush it or force it. Before I go further trying to take off the second hand, which I'm seeing is very tight. I think I would like to ensure that I have a, a nice circuit with the coil and that this clock is gonna be repairable. So what I wanna do next is, I'm just gonna strip off the wiring here, the insulation, attach a new power cord, and see if I have a circuit, uh, if it runs at all. Or at the very least, I'll hook up my own meter just to see if uh, there's continuity in it. Um, I have received comments saying I should look to speed up the video to show all these little steps, but I think my foray into uh, making faster little videos is is uh, is done. I wasn't really happy with how they end up looking. So I think for the most part, if I just explain what I'm doing, uh, it should be sufficient for any of you trying to do this yourself to understand the steps that I'm taking to to uh, repair these. Anyway, the next step, as I said, strip the wire, connect an ohm meter, and then perhaps a power cord. So let me work on that, and then I'll continue. Okay, I've stripped off the uh, insulation. Let's check it with the ohm meter. And again, when I touch the leads here, if I have a circuit, you're gonna see numbers flashing. Okay, so we're intact. Now I'm going to hook up a power cord and see what happens. The power cord is attached. I have it plugged in. And let me turn it on and we'll see what happens. Nothing there. And I don't see anything moving in here. Oh, well, we got something going. Kind of noisy. So there may be hope for this, but that is one noisy. And hopefully just taking it apart, cleaning and lubricating it is going to quiet it down. It has a very unusual design. If you can see the kind of sideways gears in there. It doesn't have a rotor, and you know, one of those oil-filled rotors. And 
and I've seen this design in some of the older Seth Thomas clocks that I've repaired. But let me proceed on uh, getting the hands off and then the, uh, the mechanism I want to disassemble and totally clean and lubricate. But you know what? Let's see what happens. What's interesting is the fact that, okay, I stopped it. Let me give the start knob a spin here. And as in most of them, if you turn it the wrong way, the clock will run backwards. Very cool. Okay, let me proceed on trying to get the hands off. Just gonna pry it off slowly, work my way around. Starting to move a little, I think. Yep, there we go. Now I have to work on loosening up this nut. The difficult thing is turning this and you have to hold on to the minute hand, but you can't risk bending it. So let's see how this works. All right, that's not moving at all and I'm not gonna force it. So I'm gonna put a bit of uh, my WD-40 around here let it soak in for a few minutes and then give it another try. Okay, let that soak in five, 10 minutes and we'll come back and try it again. It's been soaking now for about 10 minutes and let's give it a try still quite tight oh, I think it's going All right Very good. Let's see how easy the hour hand comes off. Nice. And the dial should lift off now. I'm hoping. But it does not. Oh, I see. This dial is riveted to this back plate. In which case, I almost didn't have to take off the hands at all, did I? Now, now I have to concentrate on figuring out how to access all the gears from this side. Usually you take it off from the front. All right, let me take a closer look at this before we continue. This is by far one of the strangest clock designs I've ever come across. And I'm going to try to show you what I'm seeing. First of all, it's unusual again that I can't get the, the, the dial off from this back plate. That's number one. Number two, if I'm going to take it apart from here, there are two nuts that holds this plate on. But I can't slip it off because these two knobs are in the way. Now, I can barely make out what looks like threads on this stem. So I think if I hold on to it tight enough, I can unscrew this knob. This one, though, is a slot. I don't know if you can see it in there. This is a friction grip type of knob. So if I lube it up a little bit, I may be able to just pull that one off. The other two nuts that are over here, that would get the coil off, but I don't need to do that. To remove this entire mechanism from this back plate, 
I'm seeing a series of pins. There's three of them, one here, here, and the third one's over here. And they seem to be pressed through, it almost looks like a rubber, I don't know what it is, but it's sort of a rubbery material. And I'm a little reluctant to pull them out, but I may have no choice. I mean, I'll try to give one a, a tug to see what happens here. And we have this one down here. It slides out. And I don't know if it's strictly piercing this rubber sleeve or if it's actually going through. There's a hole in a little brass post that's underneath it. But I think the first thing we'll try is to remove these knobs and then these nuts and see how far I get with that. So I'll work on that and then we'll continue. First, I'll try to remove this knob. Give it a grip. Oh, not bad. Okay. And let's see if I get lucky just pulling this out or if I'm gonna have to lube it up first. There you go. Okay, let's try these two nuts now. Hmm, this wrench is a little bit too big. Okay, now before I remove this, I'm going to take a couple of photos here. I do see gears and stems poking through here. If anything comes out of position, I want to know how it's supposed to look when everything's put back. So give me a couple of minutes for that. Okay, I'm ready to try to remove this plate now. This wants to come right out. Let me take a couple of more photos of this setup before I start removing anything else. I want to show just how unusual the setup of the gears are in this one. Let me zoom in a bit so you can see better. There's one. And there's a small little washer on top of this, very hard to see, very easy to lose. And then a sleeve here. And then this guy comes out. Now, this gear down here, I really can't get out without taking out these two pieces. But these are pretty much riveted into this plate here, so I don't plan to try to remove these. I'll just, with a toothpick, try to clean up within these slots on these kind of like screw gears, sort of, as best I can. Everything else I'll ultrasonic clean. And I may not even have to concern myself with removing this part. 
So let me get everything cleaned up, lubricated, and then I'll look to reassemble it. Let me just zoom back out so you can see what all these parts look like. Quite different from what I'm used to seeing. I have the small little washer here, I can't lose that. And now I'll we'll just work on getting everything cleaned up. I've got everything cleaned and lubricated, and I'm gonna to try to zoom in to show you how I put this back together. Start off with this one first. And then this. And then this one. And then that little washer, I somehow have to fit right on top of you know what let me put it on here before I put this in yeah that's the way to do it and lastly the plate Okay, next I have to put the two nuts back on here, then I'll be ready to reattach a power cord and see if it's working. Let me just zoom out before I do any of that. I've reattached the nuts, now I'm going to put on the power cord. Okay, next I'm going to seat the second hand and then plug it in and see how it, how it sounds, how it works. Okay, let's plug it in and turn it on. And again, the nut self-starting. I've got to give it a spin. And turned it the wrong way again. Well, it looks like it's running, and it is definitely running a lot quieter than it was at the beginning. So, very good. The next step for me, I want to clean and polish up the brass rim and the glass and I'll also clean up the hands and then I'll work on cleaning and polishing up the wood case. So let's shut this off. And I'll get to work on cleaning everything up and then we'll continue. I also would like to mention that when I talk about cleaning all these parts, whether it's the gears in here or the hands, how do I use a, a hot soapy solution in an ultrasonic cleaner? I'm using Dawn dish detergent, which works quite well cutting through grease and oil. And if you don't have an ultrasonic, just get a toothbrush and that works quite well uh, cleaning off all these parts as well. Anyway, let me get working on this stuff. I've cleaned up the glass, polished the rim, cleaned off the hands. What I want to do next is place the hands back over the dial. The minute hand only seats in one direction. So once I have it on, I just have to move it to the 12. 
and then follow that up with the hour hand. Actually, we're moving the minute hand and then the hour hand. Now the minute hand goes back over it and it's on the 12. Next, I have to secure it with the nut. Okay, now I have to tighten up the nut. Okay, and lastly, the second hand. Next, I have to position the glass back in the rim and seat the whole thing over the dial. And if you recall, I have to bend these notches back against this back plate. That will take a couple of minutes, so I'm just going to work on that. Once it's secured, then I'll continue. I've removed the power cord. It makes handling the whole thing easier. And then reattach the rim to the back plate so everything is nice and tight here. What I want to work on next is uh, restoring the wood case. I'll be cleaning up the wood and then using my Howard's Restore Finish and the Feed and Wax. Uh, together they take out a lot of the blemishes and scratches in the wood and gives it a nice polish and let me show you how I do that. This is the restorer finish and I'll show you the case and I don't know if you can see it too clearly but there's a lot of sort of dried out white blemishes on the wood, scratches along the side here and I'll show you what happens when I go over it with the Restore Finish. You just need a little bit. You wipe it on, and you wipe it right off. And I think you can really see the difference in what it does, what it brings out in the finish. Anyway, I'm going to go over the whole case like that, then I'll let it sit. The, uh, it says at least a half hour before treating it with the wax. I like to let it sit overnight. And when I come back with it, it'll be the case will be fully completed. I know I said I was going to come back with the completed case, but I just wanted to show you I've gone over it with the Restore finish so far. And you can see how it came out just from that alone. And I'm going to follow up this with the Feed and Wax, which is this product. And it's just a little wax on the cloth, rub it in, and wipe it off and kind of polish it in just like you would do any wood polish. Anyway, now when I come back, it will be completed. I finished polishing the case and I think it came out looking pretty good. What I have to do next is attach a power cord to the back of the clock, snake it through the case, and then I'll be ready to insert it and secure it and that should finish things up. So let me get to work on that. What I chose to do with this one, because it's a hollow case and there's plenty of room in here for the wire, 
I used a couple of wire nuts to secure the power cord. Now I just have to slip the mechanism back into the case. There we go. Now I just have to secure it with a couple of screws and we'll be finished. I've inserted and tightened the screws. Let's set it up and give it a test run. There you have it. It's plugged in and it's running. And it's running a lot quieter than it was at the start. The Continental Electric, made by the Continental Manufacturing Company of New York, New York. I don't know what year it's from, but the fact that it is a not a self-starting clock tells me it's probably somewhere in the 1930s. I hope you enjoy the video. I have lots of others for you to check out. And that pretty much wraps things up. Bye for now.